This is Mitch Berukowitz, managing partner of Merida Capital Partners. I'm really excited today to be joined by Pete Cadens, the former CEO of GTI um, out of uh, Green Thumb Industries. Uh, they were uh, one of the big multi-state operators, now public in Canada. And Pete's decided to join us today so we can get behind the scenes on three deep questions with Merida Capital Partners. So, Pete, um, I'm going to take you back four years ago. Uh, we were both crisscrossing states, Maryland and, and Pennsylvania. And um, we had a chance to meet, if you remember. Uh, I hope you do. Why don't you tell us, what were we both doing in York, Pennsylvania on, on a strange day? <laughs> so uh, we were both pitching the city of York, and I believe it was the Chamber of Commerce. There were 80 people sitting Maybe economic around the, development. Maybe ec yeah. 80 people sitting around the table uh, trying to impress them to get their sponsorship and support uh, as we both applied for a, uh, a medical cannabis uh, vertically integrated license in Pennsylvania. And you were very gracious, actually. So I went. Wait! For don't 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 jump in front of us yet. All right. Just what we're doing there. I'll right. ask the question. All right. See, all right. you're jumping from my interview. Right. This is good right. interview, though. This is good interview. Right. It's all good. Right. This right. Is so um, <laughs> cut. <laughs> so no, don't cut. Yeah. Keep running. Um, so we uh we were both there, and um, so you're actually going to my first question, which is just shows you how in sync we are. So at that point, there weren't a lot of people doing what we were doing that had one licenses and were able to go into a new city and, and talk about their medical cannabis experience, whether for yours it was Illinois, for me it was, uh, Illinois, uh, for me it was Connecticut. So we're there and you got picked to go first. Yeah. So first, this isn't my first deep question, but this is a first, just to set it up. Give me a sense of, were you upset or happy to go first? Wh which did you, because there was a preference, I think. And you had more people there, I was kind of by myself. You had Andy Grossman there, one of your partners. Yeah. So tell me well, first, set the scene for us, because, and then I'm gonna ask my first deep question. I would have preferred to have gone second, to be honest with you, Mitch, because you were uh, a little bit of an unknown uh, quantity to me. So at the you're time. answering my question again. Yeah. Just answer. <laughs> so cut for a second. Just, I'm, you're 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 stealing my scene. I have you. I'm not going to be able to ask a question, but or maybe this should just. I should use this as a deep question. So I, I would have cut all this out. Second. Okay. Yeah. So Pete. So Pete. So yeah. we're going to roll back for a second. So um, so you get picked to go first. Was that your preference or how? No. Out? No way. It wasn't. Okay. Yes. So. <laughs> Given that we, what we know about the cannabis industry, how people often talk very negatively about each other, is, is that maybe, I mean, I'm just guessing, but were you concerned that this might be a little bit of a dogfight in York because we didn't know each other? 100%. Okay. So my first deep question is, you made a wonderful presentation. You were a great steward in Illinois. You were able to articulate that. Um, and I was very impressed when I was sitting there myself. Um, I grabbed the microphone. You know that I own an operation but we didn't know each other. Tell me what's going through your head right at that moment where I'm when I'm about to go. There's a million thoughts probably, because this is business now and there's money at stake. So tell me what's going through your head at that moment. Usually in, in our industry, it's competitive enough where um, when two competitors are in a room, they try and outdo one another. Uh, and I, I, I certainly thought that, all right, here comes this guy who's gonna embellish and say how great he is and say how many you know, physicians he knows and how many conditions they, you know, they meet and how many licenses they've won. And, uh, and you know, that's usually what happens in a competitive setting like that. So you, you, you flashed right to the most negative thing that could happen? For sure. Okay, so now, you, now, now you've gotta finish it. Tell us what actually happened. That so uh, it was funny because when, so Mitch got up there and started speaking and spoke for 12 minutes, five of which was saying how great Green Thumb Industries was. And uh, I looked at my partner, Andy Grossman, and we hadn't met each other right. formally and said, what the fuck was that? Like, how, why, why was that guy so nice to us? Why was that guy so complimentary? We literally had no clue. It's just something we never experienced before. Right. Uh, you know, and I believe, I think like you do, Mitch, that a rising tide lifts all boats. Right. Um, you know, when people are combative and conflict-oriented, I don't think, you know, we, we work together in unison to make regulatory change happen. In this right. industry, we need to be collaborative to make regulatory change happen. We need to be in sync. Right. Uh, that was a great moment for me. It was the first time that ever happened. Right. Well, you know, and, and just to finish the, the thought while... Um while, while we get to the second question, I think the, for me at that moment, just to tell you what my, my thoughts were, is I was really impressed. I thought, you know, and I actually, I don't know if it was five minutes, but I do know, I do remember saying, oh, I don't have to say a lot of things. Peter already covered that. Yeah. Um, and I just decided that moment, I was really tired. We, you know, I, I know that you guys have been traveling everywhere because everyone I ran into knew you. And I know that uh, you probably ran into the same thing because we were, there was very few people doing what we were doing at that point. And I was just exhausted. I knew I had a four hour ride home and I said, you know, medical, the medical side 
has to win. Like if I leave here today, I want to make sure that there's medicine done in Pennsylvania. I want to make sure that the, the patients win. And I felt like either way I wanted, I knew York was a somewhat conservative place. And I felt like I wanted to make sure when I left that room that, you know, that the medicine won. Yeah. So, um, so that was a great moment for me too, because it, it really, you know, it told me that if the medicine wins and you know, my original partner was, it was always a very personal thing about us, about the medicine. Yeah, and, so, and we had, we had slightly different schools of thought. Right. You were focused on the medicine, you know, and, and we are too, but right. I was focused on the social justice element of right. it. And, and York is a mostly minority community that's been really damaged by the war on drugs. Right. So I came at it from different angles philosophically. Yep. I think we both wanted, you know, again, rising tide lifts all boats. We sure. wanted better for that community. Right. And so now, obviously, uh, with, with the interesting thing for me in the trajectory is that I've taken a different path now where, you know, instead of working uh, or competing uh, necessarily, I've been more opportunistic, and now Merit is focused, obviously, on, on providing the things that GTI uses or all people. So it, it kind of, in some ways, it worked out. So We're an a big customer of Kush. Right, right. Yes. Great. That's wonderful. <laughs> Keep doing it. So, um, so it takes me to the second thing, which, at the, and I think that moment, we, we, built the, we, we planted the seeds for a great relationship going forward. Like a friendship, um, yep. a, a professional respect, which you know we think that we try to be the the neutral Switzerland to the extent that we can. So the second question is there was there was a moment. Um, look, this is a tough business. We both know that the travel, the strain on family, um, incredibly hard. And people on the outside don't always know that, and they don't always get to hear you talk about the personal things because, especially now that you're, you know, you sort of stepped back from. You're still a director, but you step back from the daily. Um, I'm sure you you sleep more, right? A lot more. So there was a day where you were obviously back in Illinois. You were having what I could deem a great day. You, you were happy, and um, I felt really flattered. You, you, you shared a, a, a personal moment with me through a picture <laughs> on your phone. It was a funny moment. Yes. And we're not going to talk about the picture, but it was a really great moment. It, it really showed me how much you trusted our friendship um, because it was just really funny and, and very light. And you were feeling great. Tell me what was going on at, at, at GTI um, at that moment that you, you could feel that light. And obviously being home is a great thing for both, you know, whenever you have a chance to just be home all the time. But tell me what was going through, because you were really, I could tell from that picture, you were really happy at that moment. Yeah. Um, you know, the emotional state of a marijuana CEO is extraordinarily episodic. Right. Tons of up and, ups and downs in this industry. I've had the lowest of the lows in the industry, in losing this industry. A losing a license. Right, I've had the highest of the highs. Sure. Right, and actually, when I sent the uh, picture, it was my 40th birthday. Right. And it was actually two things. One, it was the uh, restaurant right around the one-year anniversary when we got our license stolen from us in Maryland. And I was we very were, sympathetic to you. You very. Yeah. And we had gotten some insight that things were moving from a legal perspective to, 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 win our, to secure a license. In addition, uh, we had just won our vertically integrated Pennsylvania license. We are right. one of the only the five vertically integrated operators in Pennsylvania. And your market cap reflects such things. Exactly. Right. And, uh, and, and it was really neat because um, the operation, the cultivation operation, is five miles from where I went to college, a relatively poor community in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. Um, and I got to go back to a place that, in some sense, I called home and create jobs there and community there. And that was just such a great moment for me and my family and our team. Uh, so I, you know, I was just... It was electric. I was happy. I was energized. Okay, so I didn't realize that at the moment. I thought you were just excited about your 40th birthday. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and it was great, I think, and, and, and just talking about the connectivity for a second, because I think that's a really important element. It's, you know, that, that relationship actually came full circle when you introduced me to some other people that I've now done business with there. Obviously, Kush mm -hmm. uh, is involved in that. And um, I, I think the connectivity is something that people miss sometimes about the rising tide. They feel a little bit more cannibalistic about the space. So with that, I'm going to ask my third D question, which um, it's not going to be quite of the same note, but it's more about your mindset. Now that you've had a chance to step back, so two years from now, what's the largest market cap, not what company, what is the market cap of the largest U.S.-based operator? And how much revenue are they doing a year? So let's say for 2020, what do you think the largest market cap will be in the United States? You don't have to say which company. If you want to predict, I'm sure you'd say GTI. But, um, and you know, you get paid to say that. But you don't have to say which company. What do you think the market cap is? Is it 10 billion, 15, 20? Just, I'm curious to see what someone who's been so inside and so fighting on the ground level, but now step back, what your perspective on that is. So Obviously, like anything, I think that the size of the market cap and the total market depends upon a whole host of different factors. Sure, but, but presuming, true, yeah, presuming the states act passes. Okay, that's a big, um, that's a big if. That's a big if, but I, a, I, I think there's momentum. Factoring in everything you think, this yep. is people want to hear what you predict. Uh, I think the states act will pass in in, okay. in the first congressional session of 2019. Okay. Um, 
along with that, I think you're going to have a lot more influence from big industry, whether it's big tobacco, big banking, um, and, and, and big alcohol. Well, just um, today we saw that uh, one of the key, um, uh, I, I think it was one of the Democratic centers has now supported banking in a way that hasn't previously happened. Right. So that's already moving. Yep. Okay, so factoring all this wonderful stuff in. I, I think to the extent that ha happens, I think you're going to see companies in our space buoyed by, um, you know, big alcohol businesses like the Constellations of the World, like the right. Diageo's of the World, sure. um, with between 10 to $15 billion market caps. Now, in addition to so that. the biggest, so you're, so just, just so we get the answer on, your prediction is that the biggest market cap for a U.S.-based operator and not including someone like a Diageo who might already have no. their own market cap. A cannabis-based focused company will be $15 billion. Yes. And what is their revenue, if you had to guess that, that company? Because assuming that the biggest market cap equates to the biggest revenue, which we know is not true right now. Right. Right? I mean, I, I, it's, it's, it's south of a billion for sure. Okay. Um, I think it's probably between $500 million and $750 million. I mean, I, I see like, all these prognostications out there right, that I sure. find to be just hey. total embellishment. I own New Frontier, so they're, they're, right. the, they're to me they're the only accurate ones, and right. they're way lower than other people's estimates. I think between five hundred million, five hundred seven hundred, five hundred million to seven hundred fifty million. Is that pure sales, or uh, do you think some of that? Do you, do, or do you think that you know? Just to this isn't a necessarily a deep question, but this is just a question while I have you. Do you think people like some of the growers or cultivators, vertical operators, will start to do more of what Merida does, which is drive this ecosystem connectivity? Could you see them you have to, participating? You, know, you, you have to. You have no choice because. The market is going to organically and through acquisition going to become very commoditized. Margins are going to become compressed. Uh, the retail uh, presence is going to be far more important. Your investment in other uh, ancillary businesses that will support driving costs down is going to become right. far more important. I don't see any way that you can survive on the basis of just being a grower or a processor going forward. It's all going to be about premium brands, driving down your cost of production. Um, and so, yeah, I think you know more people, including Green Thumb Industries, are going to look to invest in strategic places to create more value for their shareholders. Well, this is wonderful. I, thank you <laughs> Thanks, so much. Appreciate Congratulations it. on all the success. Thank you. On actually stepping back and, and spending more time with family. And uh, well, that's thank you for doing the first to being the first thanks. one of our three deep questions with Merida Capital. Partners. Thanks for being a great industry leader, Mitch. Oh, appreciate well, thanks. It. You yeah. too, Pete. I told you, this is a cannabis-infused conversation, so sometimes there's just jokes right in there. That's good. okay. Uh, listen, yeah, I love it. have fun, yeah. I love it. This is um, one of the best interviews that I've done. All right, good. Um, so back to the transition of, of Playbook 2.0, um, and we can close that part of the topic out. Uh